I also think of time as this prison. Uh, time makes us all a prisoner of the present, forever transitioning from our own past into an unknown future. We can move back and forth in any other coordinate, up and down, left and right, forward and back, but we're stuck in time. We can't move forward or backwards in time arbitrarily. Time is a dimension, but unlike the dimensions we know, we can't see it, touch it, or control it. We're trapped in it, moving in a single direction. But why? Albert Einstein revolutionized physics by showing that time and space are parts of the same thing, space-time. For him, time isn't absolute. It doesn't pass the same for everyone. It can stretch, shrink, and even stop, depending on the circumstances. And there's proof of this. The faster someone moves, the slower time passes for that person. This effect has already been measured. Identical atomic clocks were placed on planes that flew around the world. When compared to clocks that remained on Earth, the traveling clocks were behind, proving that a time really does slow down with speed. Time really does slow. And there's something even stranger. Objects traveling near the speed of light experience a flattening effect in the direction of motion. If it were possible to run at 90% of the speed of light, a ball would transform into a flattened disk. And if we increase the speed even more, the flattening would become extreme, to the point where the object would appear almost without thickness. This raises a disturbing question. If time is a dimension, why can we only move forward and never backward? The laws of physics don't prohibit time from going in any direction, but in practice, this never happens. There's something constantly pushing us into the future, an invisible force that prevents any return to the past. Some scientists call this the arrow of time. This arrow is present in everything. A glass that falls and breaks never reassembles. A fried egg never turns back into a raw one. Everything wears down, ages and moves forward. Physics points to a culprit for this, entropy. In the universe, everything tends towards disorder. This principle is one of the few absolute laws of nature. With each passing second, things become more chaotic, and this creates the sensation of time passing. But if time can be distorted, is it possible to see the past? The answer is yes. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, does this all the time. When we look at the stars, we don't see them as they are now, but as they were in the past, light takes time to travel. Sunlight, for example, takes eight minutes to reach us. This means that when we look at the sun, we are seeing it as it was eight minutes ago. The James Webb takes this to an extreme level. It can see galaxies that are billions of light years away. This means it's looking into a past so distant that it sees galaxies in their earliest days of existence. And this has led to shocking discoveries. The JWST found galaxies that shouldn't exist, at least not according to traditional models of the universe. Galaxies too young, too organized, too massive, they challenge everything we thought we knew about the cosmos. If these galaxies truly existed so early, it means the universe may not have started the way we imagined. The very concept of time itself might be wrong. Perhaps what we call past, present, and future are just different parts of the same structure, already existing at the same time. If this is true, time isn't passing, we are just moving through it, and perhaps one day we can find a way back. The James Webb Space Telescope was designed to look into the past and confirm our theories about the universe, but what it found may have done the opposite. The images captured by the telescope revealed something unexpected. Galaxies too small, too organized, and worse, too old to exist in the early universe. This is a problem the Wasep Big Bang Theory states that the universe began with an explosion 13.8 billion years ago and has been expanding ever since. In the beginning, everything was chaos. The first galaxies should have been small, deformed, and constantly colliding, but that's not what the James Webb saw. The telescope found perfect massy spiral galaxies. In a period when they shouldn't have existed, they are too well formed to have emerged so early. According to current models, galaxies of this type should take billions of years to organize, but the James Webb saw several of them less than a billion years old. This means something is wrong with our ideas about how the universe evolved. And there's another even stranger detail. The expanding universe model predicts that as we look at more distant galaxies, they should appear larger due to the effect of cosmic expansion. But what the James Webb found was the opposite. The ancient galaxies appear smaller than expected. For this theory to hold up, 
these galaxies would have to be absurdly compact. One of the most extreme examples is the galaxy GHZ2. It shines brighter than the Milky Way, but has a radius of only 300 light years. Compared to the size of the Milky Way, which has a radius of 50,000 light years. This is like a giant lighthouse the size of a city. It simply doesn't make sense. But there's an even bigger problem. Some of the galaxies found by the James Webb appear to be older than the universe itself. Stars within them indicate an age greater than 13.8 billion years. Which would be impossible since, according to the Big Bang Theory, the universe didn't even exist at that time. If these data are correct, it means that the universe may be much older than we thought, or perhaps never had a real beginning. This completely overturns the idea of the Big Bang. Furthermore, the number of galaxies detected by the James Webb also doesn't match predictions. Calculations indicated that in the early universe there should have been a much smaller number of galaxies, but the telescope found dozens of times more than expected. This could mean that the universe never went through a chaotic beginning, and that there have always been galaxies scattered throughout the cosmos. The Sadazanji's cosmic microwave background radiation which is considered one of the main pieces of evidence for the Big Bang, is also under suspicion. This faint uniform glow that fills all of space was interpreted as the remnant of the initial explosion, but new analyses have shown that this radiation has asymmetries that shouldn't exist if it truly were an echo of the Big Bang. The data are accumulating and pointing to an uncomfortable possibility. What if the universe never had a beginning? What if time and space have always existed without a starting point? This would completely change our understanding of reality. The James Webb was launched to confirm our theories, but it may end up dismantling them all. Does time exist, or is it just an illusion? For centuries, we've believed it flows like a river, moving from the past to the future. But what if that idea is wrong? Some scientists suggest that time doesn't pass. It simply is. The block universe theory proposes that past, present, and future already exist like pages in a book. What we call now is just a fixed point within this block. Nothing actually moves in time. We just have the impression that things happen in sequence. If this is true, it means the future is already determined. Everything that will happen already exists, and our experience of choice may just be an illusion. But if time doesn't flow, why do we feel it passing? One explanation comes from the concept of Platonia, created by physicist Julian Barber. He argues that reality isn't a continuous flow, but a collection of separate moments. Each now exists independently, without direct connection to the previous or next. Our consciousness creates the illusion of continuity by connecting these mental images. If the idea of fixed time already seems radical, some theories go even further. The Big Crunch Theory suggests that at some point the universe might stop expanding and begin to contract. This collapse could reverse the flow of time. If that happens, what we call the past could become the future. This concept isn't just speculation. Mathematical models show that if the universe is closed and dense enough, it can decelerate, stop, and begin to shrink. At the end of this process, everything would return to the same high-density state of the beginning, perhaps triggering a new Big Bang. But there's a problem. Quantum mechanics and a general relativity conflict when we try to understand time. According to relativity, space-time is a continuous structure, but in quantum mechanics, things work very differently. In the quantum world, particles can be in two places at the same time. This completely challenges the classical view of space and time, the famous double-slit experiment. Proved that an electron can behave as both a wave and a particle at the same time, and that its position is only defined when someone observes it. This suggests that time may just be an effect of our perception. New theories suggest that space-time may not be continuous, but granular. Just as a computer screen appears smooth but shows pixels when zoomed in, space-time may be made of minimal units, called space-time atoms. If this is true, it means that time can be discrete, not a constant flow. Small quantum jumps could be happening between each moment, but on scales so minuscule that we can't perceive them. Time may not be what we think. It may be just a mental construct, an emergent effect, or something much stranger than we imagine. Physics still doesn't have a definitive answer. But one thing is certain, the more we study it, the more time seems to escape our understanding. 
What exists beyond what we can see? For centuries, we believed that reality was composed of particles, forces, and empty space. But recent discoveries suggest that this may be just an illusion. The very fabric of space-time may be something much stranger than we imagine. String theory proposes a radical idea. All the particles in the universe, from electrons to quarks, are not indivisible points, but tiny, vibrating strings. The frequency at which these strings oscillate determines the properties of matter. An electron would be a string vibrating in one way, a photon would vibrate in another. But there's an even stranger detail. For this theory to work, the universe cannot have just three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. It needs 11 dimensions. The extra dimensions would be curled up on scales so small that we cannot perceive them. If this is true, what we call reality may be only a fraction of something much larger. But if these dimensions exist, why have we never detected them? Scientists are looking for answers in extreme events, such as gamma ray bursts. These bursts are the most powerful in the universe. They occur when massive stars collapse or when black holes merge. The energy released travels for billions of years until it reaches Earth. If space-time is formed by discrete structures, the light from these explosions can reveal this. Loop quantum gravity suggests that space-time is not a smooth surface, but rather a network of tiny intertwined loops. Each point in space would be a connection between these links. On microscopic scales, space itself may behave discontinuously, taking small jumps instead of being continuous. If this is true, the light from distant cosmic events could reveal small irregularities, showing that space-time has a granular structure. Some research suggests that there are anomalies in the light from gamma-ray bursts, but the data are not yet conclusive. Meanwhile, another theory goes even further. What if space-time isn't something fixed, but rather something that emerges from quantum interactions, say? Eh? In the quantum world, particles can become entwined in a phenomenon called quantum entanglement. Two particles can be separated by millions of kilometers and still share information instantaneously. This completely challenges the traditional view of space. If quantum entanglement defines the connections between particles, then perhaps space-time itself is born from these connections. This means that space and time would not exist independently of the particles. They would create the structure where everything happens. If this theory is correct, it means that space-time can be dismantled and reconstructed, just as particles can be created and destroyed. Gravity, which is now explained as the curvature of space-time, could be understood as an emergent effect of quantum interactions. But how to prove this? The James Webb Space Telescope could be the key. It has already detected cosmic structures that shouldn't exist so early in the universe. If it finds patterns in the light from distant galaxies that cannot be explained by traditional physics, this may indicate that space-time truly has a hidden structure. If we are right, what we call reality may be just an illusion generated by something much deeper, and the universe may be much stranger than we ever imagined.